Okay, so now we're going to return to the YouTube video, video folder to access the installation. And the very first thing that we're going to go about installing is the Matricon OPC simulation, which we're um, using for our OPC server. And for this installation, we're just going to follow all the defaults. And then after we finish this installation, we're going to proceed with the .NET framework and the patch and the prerequisites as before. When these are finished, we're going to also install the OPC interface. And during this time, we will need to specify the default Pi server. And then we'll finish the installation with the ICU, keeping everything as default. So now that we've finished all the installations, we're ready to go and check that we can connect to the OPC server. So for this particular case, we're going to browse to the Pi system and go to the Pi OPC client tool. So we're going to use this tool to identify that we are able to connect our OPC server and what values we're getting. So if you go to the connect to a node button, this will populate a list of the OPC servers. So it's this blue icon right here. So if we click on it, then we see our list of our OPC servers. And so we're going to be connecting to the Matricon OPC simulation server. And so you can just double click to connect. So now that we're connected to our OPC server, we want to take a look at the values for different tags that we're getting. So how to do this is you can go to the yellow folder, which is add group. And from there, we're going to hit create. Then we're going to browse OPC server add tag, which is this icon right here. And we're going to select this. From there, we're going to check the box flat and hit list. Then we're going to select all. And as you can see right here, before we select this, these are all the tags that we're getting from our OPC server. So select all, add selected, and then we're going to hit OK. So these are all the tags. And if we hit refresh, we can see the values that we're getting for these specific tags. So this is the list that we're looking at here. So this confirms that we are connected and that we can receive these values. The one thing that's going to be particularly important for us later is this last column, item ID. And this is what we're going to be using um, to specify the instrument tag when we create these points on the Pi server node. So now that we have been able to confirm our connection to the OPC server, we're done with the OPC client tool. And we're going to move on to the next thing, which is to create the OPC interface. So we're going to use a tool called the Interface Configuration Utility, or ICU, which is also under the Pi System folder. So now that we have this open, we're going to create our OPC interface. So we're going to go to the Interface tab at the top. And from here, we can select the new Windows Interface instance. For our case, we're going to choose from the batch file. Then we're going to open the OPC INT folder. And from there, we're going to select the OPC INT dot bat underscore new. So now we're going to choose the Pi server. So if you click add server, we see VM1 Pi server. If we try to connect, you'll notice what happens is we get this error, unable to open a session on a server. And this is because we don't have the appropriate trusts or mappings in place for this connection. So this is something that we're going to need to take care of now so we can continue the OPC interface configuration. To do this, we'll return to the Pi server node and we'll use system management tools or SMT. From here, navigate to the security tab and then mappings and trusts. So we have both a mappings tab and a trust tab. Since we're creating trust, we're going to stick on the trust tab. We will create a series of trusts. There is an icon located up here that we can use. We're going to select the advanced settings. When you configure trusts, you want to set them up using the fully qualified domain name, the short name or computer name and IP address. We're going to start with the fully qualified domain name and the first trust we're going to be setting up is for the SDK application. Here we are going to specify it by the fully qualified domain name. For this, we're going to need to fill out the network path field. We're going to write the fully qualified domain name here. 
you can see that there are other fields, the IP address and the net mask. And since we're doing the fully qualified domain name, we're going to leave these blank. If we had also filled these fields out, both criteria would need to be met. The application name for the SDK is pi-sdkutility.exe. We're also going to select pi groups and the groups pi admins when we're assigning the identity group or user. Now we'll create two additional trusts for the SDK. One will be for the short name and one will be for the IP address. And then we're going to repeat the process of these three trusts for the other applications, the ICU, the PyBuff SS, which is the buffer subsystem we'll be using, and the interface service as well. After completing our 12 trusts, we are now ready to move back to the interface node and finish the configuration of the OPC interface. So we're going to connect, and as you can see, we're connected as PI admins now successfully, and we're going to select the VM1 PI server for our host PI server slash collective. When using the ICU to configure an interface, there are a couple specific items in the ICU that we're going to be focusing on. The very first one is the point source. Since we have an OPC interface, we're going to leave the point source designated as OPC. The other key item is the interface ID, which we're going to leave at the default of 1. Now, there may be situations where you have multiple OPC interfaces, and you would use this interface ID as a way to distinguish between them, especially for your tag configuration. So these are two fields that we're going to need to specify later we make the tags on the Pi server. So this was all done on the general tab. Now we're ready to move to the interface specific tab, which is OPC INT on the left here. And on this tab, we'll need to specifically indicate the OPC server name. Right now, this is the default, and we need to change this setting here. In order to get the OPC server name, we can use the OPC client tool that we were looking at earlier. And you can see that the OPC server name is the matricon.opc.simulation. And so we want to make sure to type this in exactly as such. In order to save these changes, we're going to hit the apply button at the bottom before we move to our next tab. Our next tab is the service tab on the left here, and we're going to use this tab to create the service. We're going to leave the startup type on auto and just hit the create button. Once the service is created, it'll indicate a ready on the bottom text, and we are now ready to start the interface for the first time. Before starting the interface, it's a good to have a continuous message log open, and an easy way to do this is to use this button right here, which brings up the corresponding command prompt. In order to start the interface, we're going to use the green arrow right here. And we're going to watch the message logs to verify that startup was successful. So we are successfully connected. One thing you will notice if you're following the command prompt is you see the total number of points matching point source OPC is zero. This is because we haven't configured any tags for this particular interface and so this is something that we're going to do next. So we're going to return to the Pi server node and Gavin is going to walk you through the tag configuration from here.